temperature. Uh, if it's any colder, it's going to spit out bubbles, and you're not going to get a nice even pattern. Uh, if you're doing it on a hot day, make sure you give it plenty of time to harden between your coats, or again, you're going to get drips and globs, and it's not going to be pretty. I put these uh, little crawly cottage cheese cups underneath so that I could raise my sword off the surface. If you lay your weapon down on a flat surface and you spray, if there's any drips, it will stick to the surface and it'll peel when you go to lift it, uh, which causes you to have to restart. So you don't want that. I don't want any Plasti Dip to damage the design on the hilt. Um, I started by wrapping the handle. Um, I didn't have to go all the way up the hill because this is the only area that was going to be next to the area getting Plasti Dipped. So with this, um, I ended up not stripping it because this is not a Plasti Dip base. Um, this is not peeling, it is not flaking, it is solid, um, therefore it does not need uh, stripping before painting or before Plasti Dipping. So, got my can. I'm going to shake it up like it was success on the back of the can. So with your Plasti Dip, uh, don't tilt it upside down. You'll get bubbles. Keep it upright as best as you can. And you're just going to start now. Right. And I'm just kind of going in nice, even coats. You don't want to do too much at once because that's when you get the drips. You don't want the drips. Even coat. And I like to go in both directions so that way, if I go one way and I missed a spot, I can go back the other way and hopefully get it. And on the tip, I always do a little extra because that's usually the area that sees the most use, the most combat. And again, you can see there it's starting to get a little bit fluid, a little bit liquidy. So I'm going to stop before I get drips coming off of it. I'm just going to kind of look up here and do a little on the top. Very light, very even coats. Let's say you get a huge fat bubble. You can always take your finger and go up and you can rub that bubble down until it's smooth because uh, this is Plasti Dip. It will smooth itself out as best as it can. Uh, once it's smoothed out, just take your can, go over it lightly and it should even itself out. Uh, so that's pretty much the basis of Plasti Dipping. And again, you don't want your can to be too cold. Um, it will make bubbles and glops if it's too cold. After you've used it, and you haven't used it in about an hour, you'll want to look at the tip. If you see like a little glob in there, just kind of take your thumb or your finger and rub it across the top. and Anything that's in there it should kind of start to come out. Because if the tip of this is not clean, you'll also end up with unnecessary bubbles and headaches. I usually give the sword or the weapon maybe a good 20 minutes to half an hour between each coat. If it's warmer out, I might give it 30 to 40 minutes just to be safe. Um, in the humidity, it tends to take longer to dry. In the winter, of course, when it's freezing out, it takes less time to dry, um, but it may not dry properly if it's outside. So room temperature or slightly above is always best. Um, my guess would be between like 60 and 80 degrees is prime. Anything over that or anything with a lot of humidity is going to give you some issues. So today I'm doing a uh, sword that requires a lot of green. So I'm going to do the base of this sword probably in one of these two greens. Um, they come out really nice. Uh, I have a large quantity of them, so I'm going to use that up. Both of these I got at the craft store AC Moore. Um, I believe you can probably find them at like Joanne Fabrics or Hobby Lobby or one of those places. Uh, for depth and for a little bit of color and texture, I might use one of those two. Also bought at AC Moore. Um, and then over here, I've got my paints ready to go. Right now I'm just starting with one of the big tubes of green. Got my water, got my brush and cloth to dab off a little extra. Um, now I talked to you in the last video about a Walmart paint that did not work out so well. This is what it is. 
Uh, it's called Simply Acrylic. Bought this at Walmart. I used it maybe twice. Uh, as you can see, I had to use quite a bit of it uh, just to get out a nice color. I think I had to do like maybe five or six layers of this just for it to look solid. Um, it, cut, it you know it came out really watery and not so pretty. So I don't really use this anymore. Sometimes I might use it if I don't need a bright yellow, um, just because it is so thin and watery, even without me adding anything to it. So I'm going to take my Premier paintbrush that I got at uh, Hobby Lobby. Uh, it's made by Amethyst. Uh, this one is a size 12. It's just a flat tip. Um, I tend to use this the most. I'm just going to get it a little bit of wet. Kind of dab it. Uh, now to start, I don't want it to be too dry because I want my paint to be a little bit fluid as I brush it on. So I'm just going to pick up a nice amount. Come right over here and I'm just going to start putting it on. Um, this sword in particular has grooves in it, so I'm going to go a little vertical as well as horizontal with it. And you can use a bigger brush if you like. Um, I prefer this size. This is one of my favorite size brushes. Um, and I just kind of keep going back and forth until I feel like I have a good coat. If you add a color somewhere and you don't like it, like let's say I don't want that green, just come over here, dab up your brush, you know, wet it slightly, and you can just go right into somewhere you don't like and you can just start removing color just like that. And if you have a paper towel, that also helps uh, quite a bit. So as you can see right there, the, the water almost pretty instantly took off the green from that area. Uh, if I was really picky and I really wanted the green gone, I would have a paper towel and I would be dabbing that area carefully. Make sure your base coat is uh, good and dry before you do the second coat. You can see here I've got my sword. Uh, it's been drying here for approximately two days or three days. Um, I just want to make sure it was good and dry before I start applying my sealant. Um, so now you should be able to go ahead and touch it and squeeze it without any flaking or cracking. A little shake. And I just kind of go right down the design. A little closer there. And there you have it. Uh, so after you've sealed your weapon on all angles and sides that have acrylic paint, uh, let it harden for at least 24 hours. Um, you can tell that after you use the frog juice, you can usually touch it within about 40 minutes or less. Um, but I give it a full 24 to 48 hours to cure. Uh, the longer you can give it, you know, the better it'll be.